Welcome to Hearts of Gold, where Gold Award Girl Scouts share their experiences earning the Gold Award, the highest award a Girl Scout can earn. Hearts of Gold is presented by the Grow and Share Network in conjunction with Off the Walter Media Productions. Welcome to Hearts of Gold. Today we have Shelby from Oklahoma with us. Hi, Shelby. Can you tell us about your Gold Award project? Hi, thank you. Um, BDS, or Black Dog Syndrome, is a term used in adoption centers to describe why darker animals are less adopted than lighter colored animals. And so what I wanted to do is to create an adoption day, a yearly adoption day, to raise awareness about what Black Dog Syndrome is and to get some animals adopted. And how did you discover this issue? I worked with Pets and People, the program that I used a long time ago whenever I was working on my bronze award. And um, I was having a lot of trouble figuring out what I wanted to do for my project. I couldn't really find something that I was passionate about and I really wanted to work on. Um, And then just in a moment of desperation, I went to my other projects and looked to see what I really thought was gonna be something interesting for me. And then I went to Pets and People's website and found this video about black dog syndrome and I just started bawling. (laughs) And I remember watching it all those years ago and bawling the same way. Um, And I have a chocolate lab myself, so, and she fits under the black dog syndrome idea. So it was just like super sad to see um, dogs like that not being adopted just because of their color. So I decided that that was something worthwhile and meaningful for me. So can you tell us a little bit more about what black dog syndrome is? Black dog syndrome is basically, um, people will go into adoption centers looking for a new pet um, for their home, and they'll kind of just wander past black dogs, black animals, just because they look um, a little duller. I, not a term I would necessarily use in my opinion, but that's how people see them. It's just what people do just because they're dark, more kind of just pass along and move on to something that they see. Um, and it's really sad because they're, they don't have enough time to get to know their personalities while they're in the adoption centers for such a short period of time. So um, my adoption day gave the um, people time to like take the dogs out of the kennel and get to know them so that they could see their personalities instead of just judging them on their color. And you said that you had previous either bronze or silver award projects where you had also worked with the same organization. So what did you do for your bronze and your silver award? Well, my bronze word was with pets and people, and I created treat bags for all of the dogs um, because they're stuck in there. And um, the shelter that I use, pets and people, it's a no-kill shelter. So they have dogs in there that stay for two, three years. And they also have this policy where um, if they, if someone wants to bring a dog back after they've adopted it, they can. So they have dogs come back after eight, 10 years of being adopted by this family come back to their shelter. Um, And so I just felt like if they had um, some new toys and some treats and stuff like that, that I could kind of make them feel better about being in the kennel for that long. And what was your silver project? My silver project was for um, Martin Nature Park. Um, It's a a little park on um, Memorial and I made backpacks for, children that come in to the nature center and they can take it and it's full with different books and stuff that they can look at all of the nature and see what they know and what they can learn about what they're seeing. And so back to your gold award project, what was your biggest takeaway or thing that you learned during your project? I learned a lot about communication and marketing just because um, a project like this, a yearly adoption day, it's kind of hard to start up just because not many people know about what black dog syndrome is and not a lot of people come to adoption days in the first place. So um, I had to talk to a lot of marketing people and um, a lot of different television programs and stuff like that to see if they would be able to kind of broadcast what I need them to broadcast so that people know what black dog syndrome is. Um, It was a lot of hard work, obviously, because stuff like that doesn't come easy to people like me. I mean, I'm very young and I don't really know anything about what marketing is and all of that. I learned over the course of a year about how to market, how to say what I need to say. It was worth it. 
um, I ended up going on um, Fox News for the Oklahoman to talk about what black dog syndrome was. And it was really amazing. And so for other girls that are looking to expand their marketing experience like you did, what are a couple of tips or tricks that you have for them? Put yourself out there. I know it's really difficult, but um, if you make the first step, if you tell people what you're doing and how important it is to you, people will respond. I thought that it was going to be really hard to get people to talk. My project was just because um, it's something that not a lot of people know about. And so as soon as I told them about what it was and how um, it impacted all of these animals and how important it was to me and to our community, they started to listen. So just as long as you put yourself out there and talk to people about what you're doing, people will answer. And what was your biggest struggle with your project and how did you overcome it? One of the biggest problems I had was trying to get food trucks to come to my adoption day just because they have no way of knowing how much service and how how much they're going to be able to talk to people and get them to come to their business more often um, and how much they were going to earn from the, the experience. So it was hard to get them to, you know, come. And then we ended up not being able to have them there because it was so cold. Um, they weren't able to function under the right circumstances. It was really hard just getting over the fact that they, I worked so hard to get them there and then they ended up not being able to go. Um, but we ended up um, buying some pizzas and donuts and stuff um, for us to sell, to donate back to Pets and People, which was I mean, it turned out well in the end, but it was probably the hardest thing that I had to go through. (laughs) And what thing did you learn from your project that you see yourself using in the future? Definitely my communication skills. I've gotten a lot better at um, talking to people and um, talking to big cameras and stuff. That was probably one of the scariest things Um, because we had an interviewer come to my house and have all of these cameras set up in my room and it was just crazy and I was not ready for it but after that and after Fox and all of those people coming to talk to me I've kind of learned about how how to handle myself in front of a camera or in front of people you just have to kind of learn how to that over a year's worth of (laughs) all of this happening so um, it's probably been the most rewarding thing out of the experience, definitely. And I understand that you are a musician and you know how to play lots of different instruments. <laughs> well, I play flute and piccolo um, and I'm a drum major for my high school. Actually, I just graduated, but I was a drum major for two years and I got to conduct for my marching band. So um, that was really cool. <laughs> Great experience. That probably was one of the biggest reasons I was able to complete my gold award just because I got to in that same type of area, I got to learn how to handle myself in front of people because I'm in charge of 200 people. (laughs) So um, that was amazing. Um, Yeah, (laughs) Um, I also play flute and piccolo. Um, It's really fun. I just went to Ireland and performed at um, a couple of cathedrals. Um, It was amazing, yeah. And so what other Girl Scout experiences have you had that you'd like to share with the audience? I've been a Girl Scout for 12 years, long time. (laughs) Um, And I have been in two different troops. This, my troop that I'm in now, Troop 177, I founded this troop with my mom. We created this troop um, and I have been a leader for my troop, a youth leader for six years probably Um, and I created my own flag team for the troop to teach younger girls how to do the flag ceremony and how to treat the flag and everything like that um, which was really rewarding. I was the flag leader for probably four years and I was the um, adult leadership secretary for our adult groups. It's just an amazing experience to be part of the been to found a troop and be a leader for all of these younger girls. What made you decide that you wanted to do that? They asked me to do it just because I was the oldest in the troop, but they also knew that I was the most willing to go and help them and be a part of something that I've been in for so long and something that I love so much. Um, 
because the Girl Scouts is probably one of the most important things that I've been a part of, they knew that I would be absolutely willing to help them. So, um, and as soon as I started, obviously I can't stop. So after becoming a youth leader, I just asked if I could do anything else to help. And so everything kept on snowballing and I just added more things. <laughs> What other experiences do you have that you'd like to share with our audience? I work with my church. Um, I play handbells with my church um, and flute in the church orchestra. And um, oh, what else? What else? What else? Um, I sing in the choir um, on our trips. We go on trips every two years. So Ireland was the trip that we went on um, this year. And um, I've also been to New York and Italy with my church um, to sing and play and all of that fun stuff. Um, and as a drum major, um, I went to the London New Year's, New Year's Day and performed for that, which was amazing. Um, but I mean, there's lots of other, but um, that's all I can think of at this moment. Um, yeah, but everything that I've done in my life, um, the 18 years that I've been alive, um, has really just like helped me realize how important this gold award was to me because out of everything that I've done, all of the places that I've been, all of the things that I've been a part of, being a Girl Scout is probably one of the most rewarding and the most helpful to me in my future. Um, and one of the best experiences that I've had in my 12 years of being a Girl Scout and my 18 years of being alive. Um, it's just been an amazing experience and I've loved every second of it. <laughs> and so talking about the future, where do you go next? Well, I'm going to Baylor. Um, and I'm majoring in environmental science with a minor in music and nonprofit studies. I'm really, really excited. <laughs> and why did you choose environmental sciences? I chose environmental science just because I realized as a Girl Scout how important it is to um, make sure you're taking care of the environment that you have and um, nature and everything has always been very important to me. So I just realized that with this gold award, especially how much I wanted to be able to give back and help my environment because this planet is the only planet that we have. So we need to make sure that we're treating it right. And um, I hope that I can help in some way in the future, keeping the planet safe. And what is your favorite s'mores trick? I prefer my s'mores burnt. So uh, I just sit there as long as I need to until um, it's all the way burnt. And I just eat that sucker. It's the only way to do it. <laughs> Well, thank you, Shelby, for sharing your story. Thank you so much for having me. Make sure to click subscribe so you always know when new episodes are released. And check our blog for tips and tricks at heartsofgoldpodcast.com. And don't forget to power your passion and conquer your challenges. The Hearts of Gold program is brought to you by the Grow and Share Network in partnership with Off the Walter Media Productions. If you want to share your story of how you earned your gold award, send an email to growandshare at outlook.com. All episodes of the Hearts of Gold program are available to view at youtube.com slash Cheryl Robinson. That's youtube.com slash S-H-E-R-Y-L Cheryl Robinson. Thank you for listening. Take care, and we'll see you next time.